I tell you what, this is unbelievable weather we've been having. But this week's been pretty hectic for me. We're closing on the sale of a house. And <laughs> it's been all the contingencies and I needed to paint this and fix that. And just a lot going on. So today, I'm getting a start on doing some work outside. And it's about 7.30. But somehow, magically, in the middle of December... 7.30 p.m. It's probably at least 50 degrees out here right now. And what I want to do tonight is mill some lumber on the sawmill. I pile these logs up and then just go through them as I get to them and I don't always remember where they came from but this looks like it was cut by someone like me who wasn't thinking about a sawmill I don't know how much it sticks out to you on camera but all of these things like this knob sticking up here there's a knob sticking out there there's a huge one coming up over here they make it really difficult to mill and then we've got the fat end down here and the skinny end down there I want that turned around. So that's the basic prep I need to do here. But all this bark is falling off. This tree's been either standing dead or it's been on the ground for a long time. The pile I took it out of hasn't been here that long. Anyway, I'm going to grab the chainsaw and we'll trim this thing up and get it set on the mill. So when I got back, I thought, what should I do today? I really want to run the sawmill. I probably should organize the shop so I've got somewhere to put the lumber. And I was debating it. 
I said, oh, let's just have a little fun. And then I remembered I've got this new power head on. I haven't actually cut lumber with it. So now we'll raise this up. We got on and up. It doesn't move fast, but it moves fast enough. And compared to other versions I've seen people talk about, I think this one's a little faster. I love having the digital readout. Also, if you guys have a sawmill and you'd like to have one of these power heads, they make them for Woodland Mills and maybe a couple other brands. So I'll put the link in the description for uh, my discount code for where you can get this. I don't know why I started that. Before I do anything, I've got to cycle the blade, put some tension on it, and make sure it's tracking right. So life is just stressful for me, for you, everybody. And I've got, I live a pretty good life, I think, but this week it's closing on that house. It's a trip we're supposed to take this weekend and we're not really prepared for it. And then I talked in that video yesterday about my blood pressure. So it's always something. I think that stress is the worst. When I can forget about it and just come out and do a project like this, I feel a lot better. All right. So first, I'd like to put a little bit of tension on this, but not fully tighten it. Oh, wow. I left it under tension. And I never do that. I feel like I'm really good about always releasing that tension. What happens is you can get flat spots in your belts and your blades from leaving it set under tension. So you always set it down till there's no tension on these cables. You always rel relieve the tension off the blade before you do anything. All right. Since it was already tensioned, we should be good on the tracking. For anyone who's wondering about yesterday's video, I have gone over 48 hours following my new plan, so I guess so far so good. Takes a lot more than two days though. For any of you out there that run sawmills, do you always use a blade lubricant? A lot of times I don't even use it. I, my blades hold up fine, my cuts are straight. I don't wanna fix anything that's not a problem, so I just haven't been doing it. But if it matters, and you have a reason why, let me know what you think about it. So I kind of had a process down for how I did my measurements off of this scale. And now I'm doing my measurements off of this, so I have to start over. So I'm going to put it back where it was. 
the last cut I made was at one and a quarter inch. Okay, so we're at an inch and a quarter. Now I want one inch boards. We have an eighth of an inch of saw kerf. The blade's going to remove an eighth of an inch or a little less. And then assume an eighth of an inch drying. So if I want one inch boards, I need to go down another inch and a quarter, which is why I was at an inch and a quarter to begin with. So now we're going down to two and a half. So right now I'm at two and a half, but I can't just make the cut. Because I talked about last time, these, these slides on here don't necessarily drop perfectly. So you always want to go down past and then back up. So we're going to go down. Now we're at two and a half and we're ready to cut. I'm going to use that exact process on the whole log and then measure and see what my actual board thickness is and how consistent it is. I don't know if you can see it, but that's just phenomenal you can't tell i just love wood grain i love doing this that's beautiful So that's a lesson learned. I saw the clamps come loose. I thought I'll get them on the next pass. It'll sit. It didn't sit. It shifted on me. So I had a choice to make. Do I go outside and get some work done or do I sit in the house? And I am so glad I decided to come out. Great looking stack of lumber here. There are nine boards. Each board is one and a quarter inch thick or one and an eighth actually. Inch and an eighth thick boards, nine of them, 10 inches wide, eight and a half feet long. Awesome lumber. And that power head made it so much easier, so much more convenient, and less thinking. I know I'm doing the math of how many inches we're at, but compared to this, the magnet scale, I think it's a huge upgrade. Anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.